Hello, my name is Brandon, and welcome to the next video in my series on basic statistics. If you are new to the channel, welcome, it is great to have you. If you're a returning viewer, it is great to have you back. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with classmates, colleagues, or friends, or anyone else you think might benefit from watching. Now you can also find the link in the description below to all of my playlists. It's basically a table of contents. And of course, Please hit subscribe and click the bell notification if you haven't already. So now that we are introduced, let's go ahead and get started. This video is the next in our series on model building. So in the first video, we talked about GLM, or the General Linear Model. And we looked at the relationship between ANOVA, the analysis of variance, and regression. This video goes one step further. We'll look at GLM, and regression, but we will pair that with ANCOVA, or the analysis of covariance, which is a bit different than ANOVA, and we'll get into that as we go. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So this video will be introduction by demonstration again. We will go into Excel, and I will show you how all this fits together. So remember that GLM stands for General Linear Model. GLM is an umbrella term for many statistical tests we are familiar with. So think of GLM as a statistical family. GLM allows us to build very complex models. It's very flexible. So methods such as ANOVA, and for this video, ANCOVA, linear regression, logistic regression, etc., are all special applications of GLM. And of course, there are many, many other methods that are related. So ANCOVA is different than ANOVA in that it contains factors, which is what we have in ANOVA, and at least one continuous covariate. That's what makes it ANCOVA. So to start off, let's have a GLM family reunion between ANCOVA and linear regression. Let's go into Excel and explore that. Great, so here we are in Excel. Now before we begin, there are a few things I need to get out of the way first. Number one, in this video, we're talking about ANCOVA. However, in Excel, there is no built-in function or tool that will perform an ANCOVA. So what we will have to do is use a third-party solution. Now, to stay in Excel, we need to use some sort of Excel add-in. And the one we're gonna use is called Excel Stat. Now, for full disclosure, Excel Stat and the company I currently work for have a partnership that allows Excel Stat to be paired with some of our business statistics titles and students get it for free. So I have and currently do work with Excel Stat in that partnership way with my normal nine to five job. However, Excel Stat is not at all sponsoring this video. They don't know I'm actually doing this video at all, but it's such a fantastic tool and I swear by it that we're gonna use it and I'll show you kind of how it works. But this is not an Excel Stat tutorial or me promoting it in terms of a paid promotion or anything. I'm just doing it so we can stay in Excel. Now the last thing I'll mention before we get started is that Excel stat, when it does its analysis, will create other tabs in the workbook. So we will have to switch back and forth between tabs. I might actually pause the video and copy and paste everything so everything's visible on one screen. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here in the first tab, we're looking at a simple ANCOVA. So here in columns A, B, and C, you can see that we have our data. Now, unlike the previous video, where we actually used Excel's built-in ANOVA function, and we have to format it, that data into columns. To do ANCOVA using Excel stat, we have to format it a bit differently, more traditionally, actually. So we have our scores variable, that is our dependent variable. And then we have year, which is a factor. Remember in ANOVA, we talk about factors. And then GPA is gonna be our covariate. So remember that if we just have factors, that's an ANOVA. Now, once we add a continuous variable, that's a covariate, and now we have switched to ANCOVA. So we have scores, year, which is a factor, and then our covariate of GPA. And what we are doing here is saying, is there a difference in the scores for the three years if we statistically control for GPA? So we'll do that first, and then we will convert this ANCOVA into a regression model to show the relationships between the two under GLM. 
Just like we did in the previous video for ANOVA in regression, this would be ANCOVA in regression. Okay, so let's do the ANCOVA. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into Excel stat here. I'm gonna go to modeling data and ANOVA. So Excel stat can do a lot of things. It's extremely complex. So we're gonna try to keep it simple. So for the data format column, so our quantitative Y, our dependent variable, will be scores. Highlight those. For the qualitative variable, see that it's checked? That's because it's assuming that we're at least doing an ANOVA. So our qualitative variable here is actually our factor variable. So that's gonna be our year. And then watch what happens. This says ANOVA right now. But as soon as I click into the quantitative box right here, it changes to ANCOVA. And that just goes to the point that once we add this continuous variable here, this covariate, we are now in ANCOVA. So I'll select that and highlight that column. And there we go. So I'm gonna change a couple of things to get a little bit more data. So everything here looks fine. I'm gonna to go to outputs. Everything's checked that I want. Looks very good. I'm gonna click OK. It's gonna confirm that these are the variables that I want. Click Continue. And here is the output. So I'm gonna zoom in. So we can see we have all kinds of information here. We have our R squared, which we'll look at. We have our root mean square error, which is the standard error. It's the same thing. Then we have our ANOVA table here, of course. So we have our F statistic and our P value and so on and so forth. And then we have different types of sum of squares, which we won't go into. And we have our model parameters and so on and so forth. We actually have an equation. So Excel stat is very thorough. So here is our output for the ANCOVA using Excel stat. Now, that doesn't really mean anything besides the fact that we can see that our overall analysis of variance is significant. So it's less than 0 0.0001 with an F value of 9.942. And if we scroll down to the type three sum of squares, which is what I usually use, we can see that GPA is significant. So that covariate is significant. Okay, so let's go back up. Go back to our ANCOVA data. Now we need to do a regression version of this. So first thing we need to do is actually code all of our variables. And we did this in the last video. And in the other two examples I'll do in this video, I won't do this by hand. You'll kind of see it mostly done. So for year one, we're gonna code those as a one. So those go with year one. The year two, we'll code those as a one. And of course, year three is zero and zero. Now, of course, we need zeros above for these variables. So let's go ahead and copy and paste those. And there we've coded our factors over on the left in the ANCOVA to two dummy variables. Now we just need the GPA, that's just copy and paste. To do our regression, we'll go to data, data analysis, regression, our Y range will be our scores, X range, our variables. We do have labels, output range will make K1 up there at the top and we'll do residuals, click OK, and here is our output. So we're really interested in the significance and the F statistic, and of course the rest of the ANOVA table. So let's look at these kind of two at a time, and we'll flip back and forth. So our F value here, our F statistic is 9.94, significance 0 0.00003. So we'll go back to the ANOVA output, the ANCOVA output from Excel stat, go down, and what do we have? The same thing. Actually, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna grab it, copy, Go back over and if I can paste it down here. Okay, now we can compare the two. So our F statistic is the same, 9.94, 9.942, the same. Our sum of squares, 3078.5, 3078.5. Our sum of squares due to regression here and our model sum of squares, 1842. And the residual sum of squares or error sum of squares, 1235, 1235. So you can see that these are the exact same. When we set up the model as an ANCOVA and used Excel stat and then used Excel's built-in regression tool, we got the same analysis of variance back. 
Now let's go back over to the output. I want to grab our goodness of fit statistics. Grab those. I'm going to paste those over here at the top. So look at our R square. So 0 0.599, 0 0.599. Adjusted R square is the same. Our standard error, which it's called in the output for Excel, the regression output, and our root mean square error, both 7.86, those are the same thing. So in our summary output, we got the same thing. And then the last thing I want to pull over are the coefficients. So if I go down to this model parameter section from Excel stat, copy that. We'll go over and paste it below. What do we see here? Intercept, 31.68, 31.68. Our GPA variable had a coefficient of 14.85, 14.85. And then you see there, everything else is the same. So the coefficients are all the same in the ENCOVA output and the regression output. And again, the whole reason we're doing this is to demonstrate that ANCOVA, regression, ANOVA, are all related under the umbrella of the general linear model, or GLM. Now let's do a two-way block ANOVA. So here's our data. Again, if you've watched the previous video, you'll kind of see how this all worked. Everything here is pretty much the same. So we have year, that's one of our factors. We have our GPA, which is our covariate. Now we have a blocking variable, and that is student. So in this example, we're taking the same eight students. So this was student one, year one. This was student one, year two, and student one, year three. So we're keeping track of the same eight students across three years. Now while we're here, let's go ahead and finish out our regression coding over here. So I've done most of it for you. Now we need to go down to our 64 here, which is year three, and we decode this for student. So zero, zero. Because again, we're in year three, fill those in. And then everything else to the right is just a replication of what's above it. So student one through seven, those are our dummy variables for student, which is the same as that block up there. So we can control everything that's in that block, paste it, we have the same thing there. And then GPA, of course, we can just copy and paste as well. So on the left, we have our ANCOVA for the two-way block ANCOVA, and then we have our regression model over here on the right. So let's go ahead and go into Excel stat and run this ANCOVA on the left. So we'll go into modeling data, ANOVA, and then our dependent variable is our quantitative variable over here on the left. Our qualitative or factors are right here, student and year. And then our quantitative covariate is GPA, there we go. Let's make sure everything looks good. Outputs. Excellent. Go ahead and click OK. Confirm. And here's all the output we get. So again, we'll quickly just kind of look at overall how we did. So our R square is 0.743. So 74% of the variation in the dependent variable of score was explained in the model. We have our analysis of variance table, our ANOVA table. We have an F statistic of 3.752. Our p-value is 0.014. So assuming an alpha of 0.05, that is significant. So it does appear that our model explained quite a bit of the variation in the dependent variable. Scroll down a little bit further, and here we have all of our model parameters. And we'll look at those more here in a second once we run the regression in Excel. So there's our output from Excel stat. Let's go back. Now we'll do our regression. So data, data analysis, regression, input Y range, here are scores. X range are all of our factors and dummy variables and covariate. Labels, residuals, and I'm going to actually put this below this. So we'll just do below, click OK. That way we can paste some of the Excel stat next to it. All right, so here's our output. We have our summary output. We have our ANOVA table here. We have our variables here. We have our coefficients and so on and so forth. 
Now let's go back to the Excel stat output. So here we go. Goodness of fit, let's copy that, move it over. Put it right over next to the next, to the side. There we go. So what do we see here? Everything is the same. R square, 0 0.743, 0 0.743. The root mean square error, or the standard error, 7.806, and then so on and so forth. Now let's grab the ANOVA table. So what do we see? We have an F statistic of 3.75 approximately. Over here, 3.75, exact same. Our P value, 0 0.014, 0 0.014, the exact same. And of course, our sum of squares are the same. We can see that we have a regression sum of squares is 2286. Our residual or error sum of squares is 792 in both models. Now let's go back here. Let's grab, I'm not gonna grab it, but I just wanna point out here, this type three sum of squares is where we look at each one of our variables or independent variables going in. So here we can see that GPA was a significant again, year and student were not. Now we'll look at our parameters. I'll grab those. We can see that everything is the same. Our intercept, 23.35, same thing over here. GPA, the coefficient, 16.76, 16.76 over here, and so on and so forth. So again, using the ANCOVA in Excel stat, and then the regression tool in native Excel gave us the same results. And finally, let's do the two-way repeated ANOVA with the covariate or the ANCOVA. So let's hop over to the last tab. So for the two-way repeated measures ANCOVA, we did things a bit differently like we did in the last video. We actually put two students into a cohort. So these two students are in a cohort for a year one, these two students are in a cohort for year two, and so on and so forth. So we have a year factor, we have a cohort factor, and then we have our GPA covariate. And then it's repeated measures is because we have two students in each cohort. So this is our ANCOVA on the left. Now we're gonna do the same thing for the coding on the right for regression. So remember our year three students are zero, zero. And then for the cohorts, we can just copy and paste from above, make sure we get this right number of rows. Paste, everything looks good and then copy our GPA over. Now we have the regression version of this problem. So let's go ahead and go into Excel stat and do the ANCOVA for this repeated measures. Now we'll say that things get very, very complicated once we start doing these repeated measures. So I'm gonna keep it very simple. I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of depth. I'll just compare the basic output between the two. So we'll go to Excel stat, modeling data, ANOVA, so our wire dependent variable is our score column. And then our qualitative factors, our year and cohort. And then our quantitative covariate. Again, watch it switch to ANCOVA. So smart way it does this. We'll just highlight our GPA. Double check we got everything we need. Click OK, continue. So as I said, this gives a lot of output. So here are our summary statistics, or R squared of 0.65, our root mean square error or standard error of 7.96, and so on and so forth. Now we have our analysis of variance table. We have an F statistic of 5.265 with a p-value of 0.003. Scroll down to the sum of type three sum of squares. Here again, we can see that GPA is significant year and cohort or not. And then we have our model parameters here. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab some of this, move it over. So our spreadsheet's getting very long here, but I'll paste the regression output down here so we can just scroll down. Okay, so there's our information from the ANCOVA from Excel stat. Now let's do the regression portion. So data, data analysis, regression, our scores are our Ys, 
X range or a year cohort and GPA covariate. Labels, residuals, and we'll put it down here. I don't want to overlap with the Excel stat stuff. To make sure we're clear. I think that'll be good enough. Click OK. And there we go. So R squared 0 0.650, R squared 0 0.650, our standard error 7.96 approximately. Root mean square error, which is the same thing, 7.96. So our summary output is the same for both. Analysis of variance. F statistic is 5.265, 5.265. Same thing we get in the regression output. And of course, our sum of squares, residual and regression are the same as the sum of squares model and error over here on the ANCOVA side. Now if we scroll down a little bit, we can see that our coefficients are the same. So the intercept is 30.468, 30.468. GPA 14.857, 14.857. So you can see here, because of GLM, even when we go into more advanced topics, such as ANCOVA, we get the same results. Now they might be presented in a little bit different way because in COVA, the way it is structured, we think of things in terms of factors, levels, and you know, a covariate. In regression, we think just in terms of variables. So we have our dependent variable in this case of scores and then all of our independent variables here, including our dummy variables and our covariate variable. So the language used in ANCOVA or ANOVA is a bit different than what we would use in regression. But again, the whole point of this is underneath the hood, we're doing the same thing. They are all related, even when you do something more advanced like ANCOVA. Now the final thing I want to point out that ties this video and the previous video together is the sum of squares. So look at the total sum of squares in the ANCOVA examples, 3,078.5. Now, if I go to the previous example, 2A and COVA here, 3,078.5. I go to the original in this video, 3,078.5. Now let me open up the spreadsheet from the first video in this playlist, the ANOVA one. 3,078.5. 3,078.5 and 3,078.5. So as you can see, when we compare ANOVA and COVA and regression using the same dependent variable, so these 24 scores here, the total sum of squares remains the exact same. And that's what ties all of this together. And we'll talk more about that in future videos. So let's go back into PowerPoint and finish out this video. Great, so we are back from Excel. Let's talk about conclusions and next steps. So you can see that GLM is like a family tree. Different forms of ANCOVA and simple or multiple linear regression are related, and this is just the beginning. So depending on the nature of the dependent or independent variables and the research goals, GLM provides many tools for us to use, and those tools are all related. So in future videos, we will talk more about GLM and how we can use it to build robust statistical models. Great, that wraps up this video, our second one on model building, where we looked at GLM, ANCOVA, and regression. So I think these demonstration videos are good to kind of show, at least numerically, how these are all related, how the output is identical in many of these tests, and how a test can be actually formatted in different ways. So we would have ANOVA and ANCOVA, when we have categorical variables or factors as we would call them. And then of course the addition of the covariate would move us to ANCOVA. Whereas for regression, we have our dependent variable and then we have a series of independent variables that are either coded as dummy variables or they of course are continuous. Which one we choose to use really depends on how our research question is set up, even though they often produce the same results. And actually you could see that in Excel stat, when we use the ANCOVA procedure in Excel stat, we got a ton of other output, all different types of type one, type two, and type three sum of squares. We got charts that were down below that we didn't actually see in this. We get a lot more output when we use the ANCOVA procedure 
the way our data was set up. Regression just gives us a regression output. So in the end, it depends on the nature of the data that we're working with, our research question, and how we plan on presenting the interpretation of that data. So let's go ahead and wrap this up. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate you spending your very valuable time with me, and I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.